Hey guys, welcome to another video. So earlier tonight, I was watching the Bills Bengals game, and in real time, I saw the hit uh, the, where the Bengals wide receiver he catches the ball, he uh, is running with the football, trying to make a play on that. Obviously, anticipating the hit by Demar Hamlin, and the Bengals wide receiver lowers his shoulder into Demar Hamlin, and Hamlin uh, does his best to make a nice tackle, which he did. And everything looked fine. No one really thought of anything in that moment because Damar Hamlin immediately stands up. He starts adjusting his helmet. No big deal. And then the camera cuts away. So no one knows what happens in that moment. And then they, they see that there's an injury on the field. And as the announcers, Joe Buck and Troy Aikman, even were saying live in real time is that they didn't know who it was at first. They were suspecting it's probably Damar Hamlin. Um, and of course, it ends up being him. The really peculiar thing about this situation is that everyone seemed to be thinking that this was either a head injury or a neck injury. So it, the cameras in replay, they show that he's standing and he's adjusting his face mask. And then all of a sudden he drops to the ground, uh, goes down and somewhat backwards and his, his limbs go limp as well. And this is classically what happens when someone's not getting enough blood flow to their brain. Um, when you see the replay, and especially when they finally announced that they were doing CPR, I immediately put two and two together as to what was going on. So when the Bengals wide receiver was lowering his shoulder, it went right into the chest of DeMar Hamlin. That's a, a blunt force chest injury. And when it gets to the point where it's so severe, where someone actually has a cardiac arrest, the first thing that comes to my mind is Commodio Cordis where essentially that blunt force trauma to the chest is a shock wave, essentially, and that resets the electrical conduction system of the heart, where the heart literally um, loses all electrical activity. From a medical standpoint, what is interesting, uh, what a lot of people might be wondering is, well, in that moment, if he sustains a chest injury, a blunt force chest injury, to the point of causing his heart to stop, how is it possible that he was able to get up and then he collapses and back down? So understand that the brain um, still is able to function for a certain amount of time, even without blood flow. It's just a matter of uh, time catching up to him where his brain was, was not able to get enough to the point where he wasn't getting enough oxygen and the brain ceases or at least stops working. Um, what is interesting on top of that is that after um, he was on the ground, he was actually moving his right arm. You could see that on the replay. So it wasn't like uh, he didn't have any brain function at all. He was definitely, um, his brain was working to the point where telling his right arm to move. So it's either one of two things. Either he didn't go into cardiac arrest right away, or it was, he did go into cardiac arrest right away, but he had some uh, brain function to the point where he was able to do that. And then his brain um, uh, just went totally unconscious. What we do know is that they frantically started doing CPR. So at what point did they, did he go from I'm moving my right arm to he's maybe talking with the staff to now all of a sudden he has no pulse. Now there are reports that they use an AED. So if he's in, for example, ventricular fibrillation, most likely when you use an AED in that situation, it's going to be ventricular fibrillation where you need to immediately reset the heart. Um, that could be explained by a cardiac contusion, a blunt force trauma to the chest where now the electrical conduction system is all out of whack and now you need to reset that with an AED. Uh, so that's the most likely scenario as to what happened. Uh, we know that he was given oxygen on the field normally when someone has a cardiac arrest, uh, at least in the hospital. Um, when someone goes into CPR or they, you start doing CPR, the first thing is you're pumping, you know, you're doing the compressions, but uh, it's not too long after where you're putting a breathing tube uh, down their throat so that you can control their respirations for them. You can control their breathing. And so I know that he's in critical condition now in the hospital. He's at a level one trauma center at University of Cincinnati. Cincinnati. And so uh, he's got a, a breathing tube, he's intubated, he's on a, a ventilator, um, and he's listed as critical condition in the current moment. There's two things about the CPR. One is that they recognize that he was pulseless right away. Uh, so when the heart's not pumping, the sooner that they get CPR, the better. And Thankfully, he has a medical staff around him where right away, or almost right away, they started the CPR. So that's a very good prognostic sign in his situation. But the bad prognostic sign is the longer that the CPR goes, the worse uh, the brain injury can end up being, no matter what happens to the heart. So obviously, 
hopefully it wasn't a very long time where his um, brain wasn't getting enough blood slash oxygen. Um, and hopefully it wasn't even nine minutes. Hopefully it was shorter than that, but who knows what actually happened there. One of the things that would be possible would be something like an aortic dissection. So it's actually when someone is in a uh, motor vehicle accident, for example, especially where they're wearing a seatbelt and all of a sudden they collide and their body's going forward, but this is the only part that's not going forward because of the seatbelt. Well, that's how people can have an aortic dissection where it's literally a tear in the aorta. So the aorta is the biggest artery in your body. It comes out of the left ventricle and it essentially is pumping blood to the entire body except for the lungs. Um, it's also possible he, he tore a different artery such as the pulmonary artery, but usually in that type of situation, it would be the aorta that gets dissected or torn. Um, so that is another possibility. In terms of diagnostic workup, they most likely already did an echocardiogram, which is an ultrasound of the heart. Now, you're not gonna necessarily see a cardiac contusion on an echocardiogram, but if you do see um, an area of the heart, like in the left ventricle, that's not moving relative to the rest of the heart, that can clue you in on that diagnosis. I'm sure they've already uh, did blood work to check for uh, troponins and CK levels, which can indicate cardiac contusion, but in a setting of a cardiac arrest, it's not gonna be very helpful because cardiac arrest can also give you elevated uh, levels of those enzymes. In terms of an aortic dissection, the best way to diagnose that would be a CTA of the chest, so a CT angiogram, a CAT scan of the chest with a contrast to visualize that aorta. It also can be picked up to some extent um, on a normal CAT scan of the chest, so he's probably already had an echo and he's probably ar already had a CAT scan of his chest and that might include a CTA of his chest. Um, these are the things that I would be thinking of when I'm working in the intensive care unit. Uh, he is in a level one trauma, so they're doing their protocols for everything, uh, but those are the, would be the diagnostic tests that um, need to be done in a very urgent manner. In terms of overall prognosis, it's way too early for anyone to speculate on that. Um, you know, it's, it's always a concern when someone has CPR, not just for the underlying problem of what caused that issue. So, you know, the blunt force trauma and whatever damage he sustained here is obviously highly concerning and that's the original problem. But the secondary problem is when you're not getting enough blood flow to the brain. Um, you know, I've seen a situation where I had a patient, a uh, 39-year-old bodybuilder or weightlifter. He was actually working out in the gym and he had he's using big dumbbells and all of a sudden, according to witnesses in the gym, he just passed out. And uh, they did CPR right away in that situation. Um, but unfortunately, so they were able to get his heart back, but unfortunately, they weren't able to get his brain back uh, despite doing that immediate CPR. So by the time he saw me in the ICU, um, he had uh, no brain function. Um, we had to declare him brain dead. And unfortunately, that means uh, death. So um, in that situation, it's, it's always a concern with what is the injury to the brain at that point. Um, regardless, uh, overall, uh, you know, you have to be very concerned and, you know, thoughts and prayers with DeMar Hamlin. It's obviously very scary, concerning. The NFL has never seen anything like this where it's happened in soccer, you know, um, you know, with the uh, soccer players, it's definitely been a thing. Um, but that was an actual cardiac arrest caused by an underlying medical condition. There's never been a cardiac arrest on the football field that was due to a blunt force trauma injury to the chest. So um, hopefully he's okay. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen. I'm glad at the very least that he's in critical condition um, because Whenever someone's heart stops and we're doing that long of CPR, it's very, very concerning and you just don't know what's going to happen. So um, thoughts and prayers to DeMar Hamlin and uh, hopefully um, he's able to pull through and, you know, we'll stay, you know, we'll stay tuned and see what happens next and um, go from there.